home theater update. Because I'm sitting here now for like an hour just fucking with everything. I think you guys should be made privy to what I'm doing because it could benefit you as, and I'll forget it if I try to make a video in a week. Here's the deal. These are four ohm, the Bucarts, the S300s, the big ones, the expensive ones, the ones that I paid for and now own. So I've taken the Airmotive 6s off, you've seen them in the review space, and I put them up here, and these are 4 ohm, and it's like the 100 watt per channel that this can output. Was pushing them enough, but it wasn't like enough enough, and I'm like, can I get better? So I took both my A500s, which are these Behringers here, and they will switch to monoblock. So they're about 125 watts per channel if you run it stereo, but if you switch it to bridge mono, which not all amps can do, that amp can output 600 watts in 8 ohms. And these are 4 ohms, so it's probably pushing more than that, less than that, I'm not sure, because they don't tell you. But, now I've got one there, and I've got one there. Oh, the subwoofers underneath are a set of Infinities that I picked up that were old stock that they were selling on Amazon, and they were $200 each, and I'm like, wait, how much were they to start? And those are $1,200 subs that dropped to $600 five years ago. Someone must have found a bunch in their basement and went, Shit, sell these. $200 prime shipping. Sold. So I bought two of them, and I'm here. I'm going to review them, but they're, they're not available, so I don't care. But they're here. They're, they're actually in place of the Martin Logans of the current time, which the Martin Logans will get put back on at some point. We're back to where I am. Now that I have... Because here's the deal. My receiver has pre-outs, RCA pre-outs. It's important to remember that. And you could run RCA to another amplifier if you wanted to, and have that amplifier powered giant speakers. But, I don't feel like running, well I could put both those amplifiers here and then run things down and then pass. But in the, the audio show sort of lights, by the way those are like $10 LED spotlights. They're really cool looking. So I, I brought the amps down, I plopped them down and I plugged the RCAs that were going to feed my Airmotive 6s in. Because the Airmotive 6s are self powered. So. I had power here, I had signal here, let's just drop an amp here, and now these, this whole cluster you're seeing here is like having a self-powered monitor. Only way more power, and way more Danish. Now, after hooking this all up, I was hearing a buzz. And the buzz is either coming from, well, the Behringers, you know, they're good, but when you max tilt them and run them bridge mono, you walk up and be like, there's nothing now, there's nothing now, but I'll tell you when there was something, when I was running RCA. Because RCAs are not designed for long lengths, and if I was going 6 foot, 10 foot, 20 foot, there was like a 30 foot run from my receiver to that side. Only slightly less for this side, 15 maybe, because you still have to take all the excess slack. Which for some reason on my Airmotive 6s didn't make a peep of noise. But running to the Behringer amps, more power, more amplification, I was hearing buzzing. So, in marks the DBX GORAC, which I just reviewed and did an emergency review release because it's only $30. Which essentially is now converting my RCA line-outs, pre-outs on this receiver to XLR. Because it's a powered unit, so it's taking signal, it's doing things to it, sending it out now with XLR cables. So these are dead Silent. Excellent. All right. Now that I have the DB Go Rack involved, I also can do left and right level balancing. And if I want to put on sub synth, but I don't want to at this point. So I have it muted because we're going to go over what's going on. So after I set all this up and I sat here just endlessly going, oh, power finally to the boot carts. Because now we're remember, we start Windows. No, go away. I said these can't do a home theater. Turns out, I was probably clipping the amplifier in the Tascam. Because it's a good amp, it's a thousand dollar receiver, but it was still not enough balls to really get these up in volume without cone breakup from, from bad power. So now that I have uh, lots, lots of power per channel, they play loud. Real fucking loud. Oh, by the way, these are just sitting here. These are, as of right now, ornamental. Just get that out of the way. I'm not playing all of them at once. That would be stupid, although I could easily plug them in. No, that's stupid. So I'm sitting here. Turn the, I ended up just maxing the gain out in that because there's a slight discrepancy in the, in the power output. It's a $200 
amp. If it was a set of Emotivas or an Outlaw Audio, I would say that you could turn them to max power and they'd be identical. But turns out, as you can see here, the right channel is all the way up, the left channel is down, and keeping in mind how how fine the resolution is, that's probably like one and a half decibels cut on the left amp. So this amp is a little hotter than that amp. So now that those are balanced, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm making sure the center image is there, because you could actually, it's awesome because you could switch that to mono with the push of a button. So since I'm running a phantom center, you're not seeing a center here, and I have an audio transparent screen so I could run a center I just I knew what my living room would look like if I could run a center or just be fucking speakers so fireplace to prevent that TV's in the way anyway so fandom centers fine sit right in the middle I'm great so now that that's taken care of I was like what's wrong with the rear channels because I've got a set of mic mb 42 X's up there and a set of the sound appeal 6.5's I forget the actual model number of them but if you look at the layout of my room, you look at the space to the right of that window, it's about 10 inches. You look at the space to the left of that window, it's like 35 inches. Which means that the room is bigger that way. Which if you're OCD, it's killing you right now. Which is another reason why that rack which used to be there is moved here because it's, it's literally like... I think that would make the room even? Like that rack represents... Real close. Well, it's leaning quite a bit, but like the 10-inch mark. So at that rack, if the wall was here where that rack is, everything would be kosher. That means Jewish. I don't know. Um, what I'm doing now. Another benefit of having the go rack involved is I literally can hit mute. And while, you know, Saving Private Ryan is playing, all of a sudden now the front channel stop playing. The front subs are still playing because I'm still running the RCAs. I've split the line out back here and two of them are going to the go rack and two of them are going, they've always been run because they've been run for the air motors and I'm just running them to the infinity subs. Then I've shut the power off on this. So now all that plays when I hit, um, when I hit pause now. This speaker, that speaker, that speaker, and that speaker, and those two subs, which I shouldn't have to shut it off. But these two subs, when I have it in surround mode and not direct, they this whole unit gets cut off at 70 hertz, so that that could take over. And that's another reason for that is because it'll uh, prevent cone breakup from this trying to do 30 hertz during a movie. So the more the, hot, the more you cut off of the bottom end, the louder this can play. And then that gets to work more. But now, back here. By the way, if you haven't watched a movie like this, I suggest it. So now that I've explained that the room is bigger on that side, that means a couple things. That means that that speaker hits faster, that speaker hits later, and that left channel is far away compared to that. I'm standing right, right here. So that's closer than that. And even though I've got the distances set in the task cam, there's a very fine amount of leveling I need to do. Plus, we've got wall, bathroom door, and nothingness to kitchen. That also affects back here, where this is sort of stuck against a wall and it's getting a lot of reflection. It's, it's basically in a, in a cone shape. And then you've got this side here that's floating midair with the cobwebs on it. I should really dust this more. So when I do my leveling, I can't just say, okay, negative three on both, because this one needs more attention, and this one needs to come down, and this one needs to sort of have be louder, and it, it's a phasing issue. That, I, that may not be distracting on the camera, but my God, is it distracting in real life. So sitting here watching this gun battle from Saving Private Ryan, just manually adjusting, because you know you can hook up the microphone and try to and tell it to do things, and it's going to do a good job, but it's not going to do an obsessive compulsive job like I'm currently doing. So, basically, 20 minutes of sitting down, watching different movies with just surround sound, and trying to determine if the left and right channels are even, because you could play the test tone, that's but you can't. I can get my sound pressure level meter 
and make the hissing out of that sound like the hissing out of that and all the levels will be even, but it's not the same as what you perceive as a human. So my recommendation, disable the fronts. If you have just a normal receiver, a normal front, literally unplug one lead, just one lead from the center channel and the front left and right so that nothing up there plays. Kill the power switch on your, sub, on your subwoofer and leave. If you've got 7.1, you're leaving four speakers. If you've got 6.1, you're leaving three speakers. And if you've got 5.1, you're leaving two speakers. And just listen to them. Listen to a movie with just the rear channels. If this microphone was stereo, that would sound amazing, by the way. Make sure that what you're hearing... If a plane flies by, or a bullet in this case, make sure it sounds even from left to right and from right to left. And that something doesn't... When you close your eyes, and I mean this, close your eyes. If you can shut off the TV, do it. You will be amazed at how distracted you can get from just seeing it. That could be a 10 inch television and you would stare at it and go, yeah, it sounds fine. Shut that off, ignore the visual aspect. We're here for the audio aspect of it. TV's gonna look fine, projector's gonna look fine. This is the part that I'm here for. I'm here for that, I just heard that come across. And I was sitting in the seat and looking, staring up with my eyes closed. And a lot of the information back here is, should be coming from the dead center. And I adjusted until it sounded like that. And then I looked forward and I'm like, all right, now left and right. What am I hearing? So this is now level. So now what I could do is I could turn back on the big sub. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna go out and buy better amps. I mean, these are working, but they're not pretty. And if I did something like this, it would have to be, well, I'd have to Zeos it up. So now that's on. Because I, I found it was distracting sitting back here without an even amount of sound. Like, of course the right sounds louder. There's a fucking 15 inch powered subwoofer over there. So that's back on. And now I'm gonna unmute this. Oh my god, I could watch that all day. That's kind of fucked up if you really think about it. Oh yeah, I just want to watch Americans die, you know, in the past. No, that's, that's fucked up. That's what Al-Qaeda does. I literally watched the beginning of that movie over and over and over again. Uh, I could put on something else. Hot, hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz has amazing surround sound in the opening scene, so hold on. Hopefully this doesn't get me pulled immediately. You can't hear it, you're in mono. All right, the echo, that little bit of echo at the end, that was even on both sides. If you're sitting here and your sort of left ear feels numb, like what's going on? Just raise it and raise it a good amount. Don't raise it a half decibel, raise it four decibels and make sure that it fills in and it's like, okay, once you know something's too loud, you can lower it. If you're trying to adjust color or contrast on TV and you're just edging up, you're, you're, you're gonna fuck up. Go way past and head down. Then go way past and head up until you've figured out exactly where you need to be. Don't, don't pussy two foot like, oh, a little bit, a little bit, loud. No, all the way. Oh God, it's too much. Okay, at least you know you can fix it. Because it when I was doing the center imaging with the, the left and right knobs on the, 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 the DBX there, I was just twist just a little bit. I'm like, fuck it. Turn it down until it was like, okay, center image is now there. So I definitely got to raise that and raise that and raise that and raise that 
and 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 there it is. And then you play it, then you do it all over again because you're obsessive like I am. So yeah, that's the little home theater update. The Infinity subs are phenomenal. They're 10 inch powered, 400 watt with dual 10 inch radiators, one on either side. So no port, which for music is just so nice. And then of course the boot carts. Oh, and I've run the sub synth with the boot carts. <laughs> it's the stupidest thing ever. Uh, orgasm. Eargasm? All the parts of me that can gasm have. Uh, the 590s, I'm not sure what I'm doing with them. I might roll them in front at one point, just, just listen to music on it. They're not as convenient as like having an extra set of headphones you like, but... Look at that. Inception, Independence Day, Indiana Jones. And another thing I find, if you download movies legally, is uh, there's a very big discrepancy of where that volume knob needs to be. I've lost my volume. All right, I think we're good. I think you understand, Devu, a little more about the actual tour. I just wanted to explain what was going on because I'm excited about it, and that's good to make a video. And then I'll explain how I'm sitting here just going, close my eyes, does that sound good? No? More? Okay. Then I put them all up. Oh, and then also another thing that I did, and if I had my remote, I'd go over it, is when I was doing the level calibration on this, at some point I had the fronts plus five, both of them, then that one plus six, plus three, plus five, and plus four. Well, you know what that means? That means you could take all those and remove them all, lower them all down. You've literally caused a bell curve issue. So you take, so when I had that situation, I was like, all right, these are both the plus five, negative five, negative five, lower that five, lower that five, lower that five, lower that five. So then I had zero, zero, plus one, plus two, negative two, one. So you get, you get bring it down closer. You don't want to have, you know, there's no reason to have everything up when they could all, it's all just leveling against itself anyways. Just make it as close to zero as you can and adjust the master volume. So this is cool. I ordered actually two more of these because I also ordered an Emotiva 7.1 uh, surround sound processor. Their new one that's not gonna be out till the end of the month. And that's probably getting dedicated to a gaming, to my 4K gaming rig, which will eventually be sim racing. And I may use the Emotivas on that specifically, the sixes in the front and the fives in the rear. And I'm gonna probably put a DBX on it because those Air Motive sixes with the sub synth, fuck, is all I'm gonna say. Even though I have the 15 inch Dayton Ultimax, which I'll probably include in that. So yeah, this is a video, you know, you like, like just like to hear me talking. And eventually I'll get back to cooking. I've been a little lazy. Just a bit lazy. Helios pizza and shit. Like, mm. I got no one to cook for. Hook me up with your sisters, guys. Get me your sister on the line. Uh, I'll link something in the description. Until then, I'm going to go watch Tron now. Because that's another test video. Tron 2. Tron Legacy. Tron 1, no, no.